Why hello there. So why on earth are so many Americans leaving the US? And is the American dream dead? Let's talk about it. If you're new here, I'm Carla. We're a small YouTube channel. I make video essays like these and share more about my life abroad on my TikTok, but a little bit on here, slowly, slowly getting into the vlogs on YouTube. So if you're interested in any of that, please do consider joining this lovely, wholesome community. And if you want to even like the video, that helps me a lot. And then we can all chat in the comments. So yes, we're getting a bit meta today, talking about why Americans are moving abroad as an American who's been living abroad since 2019. Also, if you can hear my April Spitz jingle jangling, I'm sorry, it was just to add to the, to the vibes. <laughs> Before we even really get into this, I want to acknowledge the level of privilege that goes into being an American who's moving to another country, escaping the US for its flaws, which isn't necessarily why I moved abroad. I simply wanted to live in another country, but we do have to acknowledge that Americans have a much easier time moving to different countries. And if they are trying to escape the US, they're escaping a country that many, many people could only dream of living in. So this isn't an advertisement for like, all the Americans should move to different countries and fuck up their economies and gentrify their areas. That is not what I'm saying at all, but we're simply talking about why this phenomenon is happening because I think it's fairly new. And I think it's definitely an indicator of how Gen Z and Zillennials see the United States and how different that is to how boomers or even millennials view the US. I'm pretty much responding to these two articles, so most of the stats that I'm quoting come from them. So the hashtag moving abroad on TikTok has over 172 million views. And a recent poll from Monmouth University found that one third of Americans expressed a desire to settle in another country, compared with just 12% in a 1995 Gallup poll. Now obviously this Monmouth University poll and the Gallup poll weren't exactly the same, but the fact that there's this big jump from 12% to around 33% is pretty insane. It might not seem like a lot to you, but I feel like even for me as someone in their early 20s, I've noticed a shift in how young Americans think of their future in the US or in different countries. Even when I was in middle school, it was hard for me to even like wrap my head around the fact that people didn't live in the US, which I know sounds incredibly American and stupid, but that's the context I was coming from. Most people I grew up with had family in the US for generations and generations. And while I am a second generation immigrant, most of my family from Latin America lives in the US now. So to me, as someone in middle school, living in another country wasn't a concept. I knew that people lived in other countries, of course, but it wasn't something that I could conceptualize for myself. Side note, but if you are interested a bit in how much it costs me to live in the UK and how I've moved abroad to Europe, then check out some of these videos or follow me on TikTok where I talk about that like all the time. For me, growing up as the daughter of immigrants and growing up in a predominantly white, multi-generational American suburb meant that of course, naturally, I felt a bit out of place, as well as curious about what else was out there. And I was really lucky enough to travel as a kid and as a teenager, and seeing different countries and speaking to people who lived in different countries really opened up my worldview and made me feel less strange. And that's kind of what piqued my interest in living abroad in the first place. And of course, as I got older and got more interested in politics and social issues, I also started to be attracted to living abroad for the reasons that we'll talk about in this video essay. So clearly Americans do have a growing interest in moving abroad, but the number of Americans living abroad has also grown. In 2020, the State Department estimated that a total of 9 million US citizens lived abroad, up from an estimated 5 million in 2010. Now that's pretty wild because that's almost doubling the amount of Americans living abroad in 10 years. However, to counter that, the nonprofit advocacy group American Citizens Abroad puts the figure closer to 4 million US citizens living abroad. Now this is a pretty big discrepancy and I don't fully understand why, but I think the State Department was also including dual citizens, which doesn't necessarily fit our idea of 
moving abroad if you're moving somewhere where you know you don't need a visa and you don't need to sort things out you already have citizenship so i think this american citizens abroad advocacy group is probably closer to giving us the figure that matches our idea of what it means to be living abroad or being an immigrant and i've definitely noticed this too i've been lucky enough to travel a lot and i feel like every year that i travel i hear <laughs> and meet way 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 more americans who've decided to take the leap and leave the u.s also if you're watching this part of the video comment your favorite drink emoji or like a summary emoji some, something like that you know so why exactly is this happening i'm going to give two main reasons one is financial and the other is cultural let's start with the finances the cost of living in the u.s has skyrocketed in recent years it's also skyrocketed across europe however a lot of americans especially the kind that are privileged enough to be able to move abroad have work jobs with salaries that are much higher than the average salary in the eu or the UK. So a lot of Americans might see moving abroad, and again, I'm talking about Europe in this case, as a quick fix to their finances, even if that's not entirely valid. 61% of American workers indicated they were living paycheck to paycheck in a survey from the Financial Technology Association. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that the average U.S. household's monthly expenses jumped from $5,111 in 2020 to $6,081 in 2022. And this is kind of in line with finances, but the healthcare situation in the U.S. is also a big reason, and I think a valid one, that a a lot of Americans do want to live elsewhere. In 2020, the U.S. spent $4.1 trillion on healthcare or $12,530 per person and ranks last among wealthy countries in healthcare. I've been very lucky to be very healthy for all of my life, so sometimes it is easy to forget how great it is to have free public health care. Not everyone agrees with free public health care from a political standpoint, especially not Americans, but I think more and more people are seeing how valuable it is to have access to public health care. It's not perfect in the UK, it's not perfect in France, but when I have had to do doctor visits or surgeries in the EU slash the UK, it has been a world of a difference to if I were doing that in the US. Of course, there are long waiting lists because again, it's public, so there's a lot of people to be served and there aren't many healthcare workers and they're not paid enough, all of that. But as a patient and a healthy patient, it has been mind-blowing to not have to pay for procedures or for essential medicine. Again, there's a lot wrong with the healthcare system in the UK, and it is increasingly being more and more privatized. But when I think of how much the various things I've had done would cost in the US, I am extremely grateful for that. I've talked to friends who are young like me, who have maybe had more health issues, who are hit with major medical bills, have amazing jobs because they went to amazing universities and are struggling just because they had to get treatment. And that's obviously not okay and not how I think things should be. And it makes sense that a lot of Americans are attracted by public health care. This is also kind of in line with the financial reasons for which many Americans are choosing to live abroad. And that is paid time off. It is standard in the UK to have 25 days off of work paid every single year. And this does not include bank holidays, of which there are quite a few, not as many as there are in Spain, but quite a few still. Of course, there's corporate greed everywhere in the world, but in my experience, managers, HR, etc., will encourage you to take all of your time off. And I feel like that segues us nicely into the cultural reasons for which many Americans are leaving the US. If you're interested in more of these cultural I guess, philosophical reasons for which many Americans are leaving the U.S., I highly recommend reading this article from Mike called Why Young People of Color Are Getting the Hell Out of the U.S. Of course, in this video, I'm talking about all people, but as a person of color, that's also my experience, and this article sums things up pretty well. That being said, let's talk about the decline of the American dream and the growing skepticism towards American exceptionalism that us Americans are all taught in school. There are plenty of iconic Americans who have made the choice to move abroad, some of them being Josephine Baker, who moved to Paris, Tina Turner, who moved to Switzerland, and Nina Simone, who settled in Aix-en-Provence in the south of France. And in more recent times, there's the brilliant American journalist, Tana Hesse Coates, who lived in Paris at the request of his wife, which I think is very cute. He even said that he felt the French respected him more and because he wanted his son to live in a country with less gun violence. Now, of course, we can criticize France all day, but 
that's his experience. So yes, there are these amazing, talented, intelligent, creative Americans who have moved abroad and those who continue to do so. But what is the emotional drive behind it? And in my opinion, like I mentioned earlier, I think it's a skepticism and a frustration with what we've been taught about the US and patriotism. And don't just take my word for it. According to a Harvard poll from 2021, more than half of young people feel democracy in America is under threat. And many of the individuals quoted in this article from Mike felt a sense of relief and freedom from systemic oppression that they faced in the US. Some even said that deciding to move abroad was one of the best decisions made by them as people who were feeling exhausted, both mentally, physically, and emotionally by the challenges they were facing in the United States. States. And I think there's some wishful thinking here. It might be easier to feel less impacted emotionally by systemic issues, even as a person of color in a different country, if maybe you don't speak the language. So you only talk to a certain group of people. Maybe you are living off of an American salary or US dollar savings and are able to afford a higher quality of life in that country. But it doesn't necessarily mean, and it definitely doesn't mean, that those issues don't also exist in the country you're in. I think it's incredibly easy for us to romanticize other countries when we don't live in them, but it is also incredibly dangerous because by not acknowledging the issues that exist in other countries, we are turning a blind eye to the issues in those countries and also disregarding in a way the negative experiences that many other individuals may have in these other countries. I absolutely love living in Europe. Do not get me wrong. But I think it is incredibly naive to not pay attention to the social issues and the politics of the city or the country that you're living in. But I do understand why living in the US, you might not necessarily feel it's important to be aware of the politics in Italy, for example, even though it definitely is. I feel like we've pretty much covered why this is happening. And I think it's both a bad and a good thing. I think it's good for people to see more of the world. I think it's good for Americans to reject American exceptionalism. I think it's good to travel. I think it's good to learn a new language. I think it's good to try new things, to try new food, to experience different cultures. And those are the reasons why I moved abroad. But of course, living abroad as an American or as someone from a wealthy Western country isn't necessarily doing a favor to individuals who are native to that country. And I think Portugal is probably a really, really great example of this. They have had a digital nomad visa for quite a few years now, and it has been a huge battle between the Portuguese government and the Portuguese people, especially the Portuguese who are from Lisbon. Residential property costs in Lisbon have increased by nearly 30% over the past five years. And this is exactly why a lot of Portuguese people aren't happy about the digital nomad visa. People aren't coming to work for Portuguese companies. They're coming to work for a British, a Canadian, an American company, and they're ready to spend that money to get a nice apartment for a higher cost than any other native Lisbon resident could afford. And I think a lot of people are in two minds about this because on one hand, if you are an American, for example, who wants to live abroad and that's the easiest option for you, should you turn that down. I don't have the answers, but I think if you are going to move somewhere where you know you moving there negatively impacts the locals, then you should do some deep questioning about it to either determine if you should go or what you can do to minimize your negative impact. And I think this is pretty much the same question as what I talked about in my video about individual overconsumption versus Taylor Swift's private jet. <laughs> and I think it's an interesting one, you know? It's a tale as old as time. Tale as old as capitalism. This wasn't that deep of a dive into the subject. We could get into the nitty gritty for sure, but I want to do a brief overview of it. However, if you are interested in this topic and you want to discuss it further, then leave a comment below. And I definitely make a video again on this topic like a hundred times over because it is really interesting to me and also very personal to me. That being said, if you did enjoy the video, please do consider giving it a little like because that would mean so much to me. Thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you next time. Bye.